In this video, we will focus on finding analytic expressions to determine the location of circular orbits followed by massive particles in the equatorial plane of a curved black hole where the particles angular momentum and energy parameter is known. Uh, it also tests for the stability of these orbits. It covers both the prograde and retrograde cases for stable circular orbits and how these are related to the effective potential. So the equation of motion in the equatorial plane is governed by this equation here. Uh, m small m is the mass of the particle object, whatever it is that's traveling in the equatorial plane of the source mass. That's the mass of the curved black hole here, capital M. This is the spin parameter of the black hole. Uh, speed of light. <coughs> um, epsilon is the energy parameter of the um, object that is orbiting the black hole. Now to simplify our workings, we'll make the following substitution. We'll set all our constants, m, g, c, and big M, to one. And so A equals gm or c squared times the dimensionless spin parameter A star. Well, that's simply since gm and c are all one, that reduces to A star. So the spin parameter just becomes the dimensionless spin parameter in the situation here where we've set our constants to one. Let's just simplify the problem, make it easier to visualize. <clears throat> okay, so here's our um, energy equation, or equation of motion again in this new system with the constant set to one. Okay, now for circular motion, we require r dot, that's the derivative of the radial coordinate with respect to proper time, to be zero. Okay, so that it's going to drop out, and this equation now becomes this, which is the effective potential is equal to the energy. Of the particle in the orbit. All right, next bit. Now we also, for circular motion, require the radial acceleration to be zero. We want r double dot is zero. Now r double dot is minus d vf dr, vf being the effective potential. When we differentiate the effective potential with respect to the radial coordinate, we end up with this result here, and we need to set that to zero. So we produced a new equation. <coughs> Now, both of these conditions tell us where circular orbits occur. Okay, so well, we've got an equation now. We can now solve that for the radial coordinate r. But before we do it, we'll just first multiply through by minus r to the power of 4 uh, to produce this equation here, this quadratic looking expression. Okay, can I just come back here? This minus dvfdr, it's not actually essential that um, the. Um, <coughs> I'll, I'll talk about that later on. I'll leave that for now. Okay, here we go. So here's our equation. We'll set that to zero. Here's our quadratic. Using the quadratic rule, we produce these two roots here. So we have two solutions, two points where this uh, derivative of the effective potential is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, a local maximum and a local minimum. So let's have a look at a specific example to see how this works. As an example, we'll set the angular momentum as four units. That's uh, h is 4. In these units where everything's set to 1, it, this angular momentum becomes the angular momentum of the particle per unit of mass. Because the actual value, if we put our constants back into their natural values, this angular momentum would be very much larger. Our energy parameter is 0 0.965, and our dimensional spin parameter, which is just our spin parameter for these uh, choice of constants, is 0 0.74. Putting that in, here's our effective potential. Okay. And the roots of that gives us these two solutions here. So we get a maximum at this shorter, smaller value here, that one there, and a minimum at this value here, which is down here. Um, setting our constants to one just makes the plotting and visualizing a lot easier as well. Now, just to note, <clears throat> okay, so R double dot is the derivative of the effective potential set to zero. That gives us these two points here. Bound orbits occur in the region below the horizontal axis. Okay, so where um, the energy of the orbit is less than zero, we have the bound orbits in here. Okay, I covered all that in previous videos. Now, which of these two, if any, are the locations of stable circular orbits? So we'll have a look at that. This video will focus on stability. Um, as well as finding the location. And then the next video, I'll focus again on stability. So this is where the second derivative tells us how marginally stable each of these turning points are by uh, requiring that the second derivative of the effective potential is equal to zero. 
Now, I was going to mention this earlier, so this is where I'll pick it up here. Because uh, about a minute or so back there in the previous slide, I was about to talk about it and I've changed my mind, so we'll deal with it here. Now, this negative set to zero, um, or uh, this is equivalent to, as you can see, D2 VF DR squared is zero. It doesn't matter whether we have the negative here or not. The fact is the second derivative of the effective potential is set to zero. This is where we investigate stability. Now, at the points concerned, uh, if we looked at the first point, the local maximum, evaluating this second derivative at that point gives us this positive quantity here. If I didn't have the minus, I'll end up with a negative quantity. That's all it is. It's how do you, how do you prefer your numbers to be, positive or negative? It doesn't matter. This is the same condition is satisfied if you have the positive second derivative of the effective potential equal to zero. Over here, um, evaluating at the local minimum, 13.6677, um, this is approximately zero, very close to zero. I'll show you a plot shortly, you'll see what I mean, but <clears throat> it's almost zero, but not quite zero. Um, it's very close, but, but not quite. Um, but so it's marginally stable, if you like. So the local minimum is where a marginally stable circular orbit can be found, which in this case is this object here, R, V of F. So here's the radial coordinate, here's the effective potential of the value. When I say marginal stability, it's close to zero, but not quite. I mean, for stability, you would require this second derivative to be zero. But when you're almost zero, then you're effectively close to zero. So it's, you know, and this is remarkably close. This might be 10 to the minus 10 or something if you put in natural units. So it's very, it's not zero, but it's very, very close to it. Now the location of the minimum turning point is known as the point at which the innermost stable circular orbit occurs. <clears throat> now, um, I'm going to focus the next video on finding that innermost stable circular orbit, finding expressions for it. But just for here, I'm, just for now, we'll look at stability. But if we look here in this particular case, um, we now plot the second derivative. Uh, I'm plotting the negative of the second derivative, so the plot is shaped this way. Of course, if it were the positive, then it's going to be the reciprocal. All, all this will flip upside down. But you can see from about here, this is 12, 14 units of um, GM on C squared in, in natural, in real units, natural units. So there is about 14. So from about close to 14 onwards, it's pretty well just zero. It asymptotically approaches it. It's incredibly close. So here, about here, about this is 12 units, 13 units, 13 and a half from, you know, from about here onwards, it's roughly zero. So bound orbits here are marginally stable because the second derivative is close to zero, but not quite. Clearly here, they're not stable um, uh, because it's not, not close to zero here. All right, so just having a look at overall. Um, so our innermost stable circular orbit for this particular case, remember this is uh, the angular momentum of the particle in orbit around the black hole has h equals four units. It's epsilon, its energy parameter is 0 0.965. Um, so for this particular combination of events, here's your innermost stable circular orbit right here. This region here below the horizontal axis is where you get bound orbits. <clears throat> From the horizontal axis up to the uh, maximum turning point, maximum local maximum turning point here, you have unbound orbits. At this one particular point, you get unstable um, plunge orbits, and they're unstable. As you can see how, although the particle spirals in and in decreasing circles, those circles are not of constant radii because they're not proper circles. Um, they're just spiral, they're spirals that go inwards. They resemble circles, but you can see it's very unstable. This object here at this point here is in a plunge orbit. It moves in decreasing circular like spirals until it plunges inwards. Okay, above here we get plunge orbits. Up above this turning point are plunge orbits. Unbound orbits in here above the horizontal axis, bound orbits below the horizontal axis and between the effective potential. The innermost stable circular orbit occurs here. Okay, an unstable orbit occurs up here. Um, really unstable when you start plotting here, you get all these plunge orbits, as I've shown in previous videos. All right, in general, the larger the angular momentum of the particle object, the further out is the location of the innermost stable circular orbit. You can see these red dots here. So for h equals five units, you've got right out here. <clears throat> 
HS4 out here, as we found earlier, about 13.667. Um, H equals three is closer in. Now, if you come here uh, at some point, H equals two, doesn't happen. There's no local minimum here. H equals one, you have a local minimum and local maximum, but they're well inside the um, stationary limit surface and well in, and inside the event horizon itself, as you can see from there. Uh, H equals zero, there's no minimum turning point there. So there is just for H equals one, this odd bit of behavior here, but it's well within inside the um, outer event horizon. And uh, <clears throat> the stationary limit surface in these units is about two. Well, it's exactly two actually in these units. It's two GM on C squared. That's the stationary limit surface that occurs at that point. Then about 1.67 GM on C squared, about there where the cursor is now, is where is, is the outer event horizon. And you can see for H equals one, there's not enough. As you can see that there's this behavior in here, this local maximum, local minimum, but <clears throat> you, you're not going to have stable circular orbits. Anything crossing the event horizon must go in towards the singularity. But the point here is that the larger the angular momentum of the object, the further out are its uh, innermost stable circular orbits. Um, in, in order to move in, that particle must lose angular momentum, is the key point here. All right, now to compare the prograde and retrograde orbits for the same absolute value of angular momentum. So we're going to have a prograde uh, orbit, which is the particle orbiting in the same direction of rotation as the um, or it's co-rotating with the black hole and retrograde is counter-rotating or, or um, orbiting against the rotation of the black hole. So we'll have H for prograde, H is four for prograde, H is minus four for retrograde. Now for a prograde orbit, H equals four, we get this effective potential plot here. We have a local minimum here, so you have an innermost stable circular orbit. But for H equals minus four, it doesn't happen. There is no local minimum here. All right. It just okay. So you don't have an innermost stable circular orbit for H equals for, for retrograde orbits. So there's no innermost stable circular orbit at this value um, of the angular momentum for the retrograde case. All right. So let's consider a laboratory containing an observer that's freely falling the equatorial plane of a curved black hole. Uh, as, uh, there's no spin involved, so just be aware of that, no spin. But here's our observer in laboratory, mass M, total, total mass M, small m, mass of the rotating black hole here. In order to follow a stable circular orbit at some coordinate distance R, we need to know the angular momentum H and the energy parameter epsilon is E, which is the energy of the orbit, capital E. Um, and this is the parameter uh, E over its rest frame. Uh, energy. So that's the energy of the particle at rest infinitely or a long distance from the uh, source mass. All right, now we can locate the position of its stable circular orbit. So here's our effective potential. Okay, the derivative is this. I put the units back in this time. The radial acceleration condition is this. Set that to zero. Okay, so that means we end up with this equation here. Um, we can multiply through here by uh, uh, minus one and multiply through by r to the power of four. Okay, so we end up with this. Uh, and what we'll do now, this gm on c squared, we'll take that in, uh, combine that as the familiar constant mu, as you'll often find in textbooks and elsewhere, mu here. Uh, gm on c squared is mu times c squared. Okay, and now M is the mass of the laboratory observer, the mass particle, whatever you have. Okay, and A is now the spin of the black hole, which is GM on C squared times A star, A star being a dimensional spin parameter. Next bit, to find the location of circular orbits, we solve this equation, all right, which has quadratic roots, this. So this is now putting the units back in. Next, we check the roots. At R plus, R minus, we'll call them. There's two roots, the upper and lower, for stability by requiring that this negative, this secondary root derivative at these points is zero, or for marginal stability, it's approximately zero. Now, one of the roots corresponding to the local minimum will satisfy this condition in these cases. Uh, now, also note that when A equals zero, we go back to the Schwarzschild case, 
in the location of two of the setting points becomes those of the Schwarzschild case, which is this setting A to zero. We then solve this. Now choosing H is square root 12 mu cm. I go putting all that in there, we get this here. Uh, you can see that this bit here cancels. We're left with this bit over this bit, so there's some cancelling down is six mu, and that's exactly the innermost stable circular orbit for a particle with mass is six uh, gm on c squared, which is three times the Schwarzschild radius. Okay, so that's the result. Now in the next video, I'm going to focus on stability only and derive an expression for finding the actual innermost stable circular orbit. Because here I've looked at individual cases here, given some value of h, angular momentum of the particle in orbit around the central mass. Uh, and the spin parameter of the central mass, um, what is, uh, and the energy parameter of the particle in orbit, what is the, uh, where is the local minimum going to be, where is the innermost stable circular orbit, um, okay, but what we can do now also is we can now find, for the general case, we don't have to, uh, we can solve and develop an equation in the next video where we can, for any combination of H and Epsilon, we can find where the minimum is and below which no other possible uh, minimum innermost stable circular orbits are possible. All right, um, that should be it. Yep.